let's take a look at what we call the luminosity of stars. So before we start talking about luminosity, let's consider what it must have been like for those first astronomers, people like you and me, just looking up at the night sky. And on a very starry night, it would look something like this. And likely the first thing you're going to do is start kind of classifying the stars. You'd probably say, oh, well, this here, that star, it's, it's brighter than all the other stars. And I'd say these ones over here, here and here, maybe there and there and there, those ones seem to be just a little bit less bright. So now maybe we'll assign those levels. Maybe we'd call this a level one star. And all these ones out here would be level two stars. And then we'd continue on and we'd look for the level three stars. And they ended up making six different levels from one to six. The uh, sixth level would be the faintest thing that you could see in the night sky. So maybe, maybe this would here would be a, a level six. You can hardly even see that there's anything there at all. And these levels were called apparent magnitude. So this original apparent magnitude scale is defined just in terms of estimates, in terms of rough human estimates. But of course, as science advances, we get more and more ways to measure brightness. And we still base our what we call the apparent magnitude on that original scale. So the naked eye limit, the, the faintest star that we could see, is still a 6. But it turns out that uh, the brightest star is a minus 1 here, Sirius. Venus would be about a minus 4. A full moon would be about a minus 12. And the sun would be all the way at minus 26. And then as we go to these larger positive numbers, we're getting things that are more and more faint. So the Hubble Space Telescope, which of course you couldn't come close to seeing with your naked eye, uh, has a level of about 28, an apparent magnitude value of minus 28. So we just finished saying that the sun here has an apparent magnitude of about minus 26. So let's write that down. We'll use small m for this apparent magnitude, and it's equal to negative 26 for the sun. So that's a measurement based on your bodily response, your physiological response. Your brain reports there's a difference in brightness between that magnitude 2 star and that magnitude 1 star. However, when we studied the greenhouse effect, we had this number here, the solar constant. And that S was equal to 1,370 watts per meter squared. So we could call that the brightness of the sun. But it's not based on a physiological response. It's based on an actual measurement. So it's really based on the idea of measuring how many watts of radiation from the sun would strike one meter squared at the Earth. So these, these two numbers, they're, in essence, they're measuring the same thing. One's based on bodily response. One is based on a technical measurement. Now, you don't really need to know about the apparent magnitude, but I think you understand the idea of a solar constant or a brightness, if we're talking about any star, a little bit better if you've got that background. So we said that brightness and apparent magnitude are essentially measuring the same thing. So there's got to be some sort of mathematical connection, mathematical relationship between the two. And note here, uh, brightness is often called apparent brightness. So if you see that on an IB exam, apparent brightness, that's just brightness. But let's suppose here that we decrease the apparent magnitude by one level. So we're going to decrease 
the apparent magnitude by one level. And we ask the question, if we do that, what's going to happen to the brightness? Well, we know the brightness is going to increase. And it turns out it's going to be multiplied by a factor of 2.53. So a level 2 star is 2.53 times as bright as a level 3 star. In fact, if we were to say go from a level 6 star to a level 1 star, so we'd go through 2, 3, 4, and 5, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 levels. So if we decrease the apparent magnitude by 5 levels, then each time you're going to have to multiply by 2.53 for the brightness. So you're going to have to multiply by 2.53 one time, two times, three times, four times, five times. That would really be 2.53 raised to the fifth power. So our brightness will increase by 2.53 to the fifth power when we decrease the apparent magnitude by five levels. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get 100. In fact, it's officially defined that way. If you decrease your apparent magnitude by five levels, then by definition, the brightness has to change by 100. That's how we really go back and define what's meant by apparent magnitude. OK, so now hopefully you understand brightness. We want to move on and look at luminosity. Sounds like the same thing but there's some important differences. If we've got an incandescent light bulb, we might say, well, that's a 60 watt incandescent bulb, or that's a 100 watt incandescent bulb. And that would be the input power. Now, of course, the bulb, when it's plugged in, gives off all kinds of radiation. And it turns out somewhere around 2 watts of that radiation would be in the visible spectrum. And for an incandescent bulb, the rest, the 58 watts, would be in the infrared. But when we add that up, we get an output power that's essentially equal to the input power. All that electrical energy is becoming radiant energy. Now, if we've got a star, then it's giving off all kinds of radiant energy, some of it in the visible spectrum, some of the infrared, some in the ultraviolet, etc. And we could talk about the total output power. And it, of course, is going to be very large. It's going to be perhaps 10 to the 30th watts. Much bigger number, but the thinking's still the same. If we understand the idea of a 60 watt light bulb, we un understand the idea of a 10 to the 30th watt star. It's just the amount of power being radiated outwards from that star. So let's suppose I look up into the night sky and I pick out a couple of stars. Let's say I pick out this star here, I'll call that star 1, and this star here, I'll call that star 2. Then you could definitely say that star 1 here is brighter. But we couldn't say necessarily that star 1 is more luminous. And the reason for that is we don't know how far this star is away. Let's suppose it's a really long ways away and we were somehow able to move it up so that it ended up being the same distance away. And then we could look at the star and we might find that it's actually brighter. If they were at the same distance, star 2 might be brighter. So ultimately, we know that brightness and luminosity 
should be connected through the concept of distance. So let's see what that relationship is. So luminosity is just the output power of a star. It would be measured in watts and typically we use a capital letter L to represent luminosity. Brightness is really an intensity and you'll remember that intensity is equal to the power per unit area. So the units of brightness are going to be watts per meter squared. And the symbol we use for brightness is usually a small b. And what we'd like to do now is work out the relationship between them. And we know it's going to involve distance. So let's suppose we've got a star here. And of course that star would be radiating electromagnetic radiation in all directions. So we might put a sphere around that star, imagine an imaginary sphere, and all that radiant energy would have to pass through that sphere. And if we were to make another sphere, but of a larger radius, it would be the same. The same amount of power has to pass through both spheres because it's all radiating outwards. So any sphere we draw is going to have the same power passing through it, and it'll just be the luminosity of the star. So let's imagine over here we've got the Earth. And let's draw another one of these spheres centered at the star, but this time passing through the Earth. Now, of course, this distance here, we're going to call it D, is going to be the distance between the star and the Earth. And if we want an expression for the brightness here, this intensity, we've got to take the power radiated by the star and divide it by an area. So it's the amount of power passing per unit area. Now our power of the star, that's just the luminosity L. That's easy. The area that we're talking about, if we want to find out the brightness on Earth, the intensity at Earth, is just going to be the surface area of this sphere. And the surface area of a sphere, you probably remember, is given by 4 pi times the radius squared. But in this case, the radius of the sphere is just the star to Earth distance here. So our surface area would be 4 pi d squared. In other words, all the power coming from that star would have to pass through this sphere. So it would be distributed over an area 4 pi d squared. So we'd get this expression, which is the relationship we're looking for. This is how brightness is related to luminosity, and we can see it's connected by distance. We can kind of think of it as, let's say we've got a 1 meter squared piece of black cardboard. And at night, we face it towards a star. We'll be up above the atmosphere, so the atmosphere is not going to lower the brightness. Then this brightness here is just going to be the number of watts striking our one meter squared piece of cardboard. It's going to be watts per meter squared. OK, let's try a word problem. Pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. So we're looking for the luminosity of Betelgeuse. So I'm going to use LB for the luminosity of Betelgeuse. And we know we have this relationship that the brightness or intensity of a star is given by the luminosity of that star divided by 4 pi d squared. So if I want to solve for a luminosity, in this case the luminosity of Betelgeuse, it's going to equal 4 pi d squared times the brightness. Our distance there was 4.3 times 10 to the 18th. That'll be squared. And then we've got to multiply by this brightness, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 7. And notice all the units are mks. So we don't need to do any conversions. Multiply that out and you should get about 3.7 times 10 to the 31. And that would be in watts. And what they ask you is to write 
the luminosity in terms of the luminosity of the sun. And this is very common here. And typically you write the luminosity of the sun as either LS or L uh, with a little circle and a plus sign. That represents the luminosity of the sun. So if I want to find out LB in terms of the luminosity of the sun, I need to take that 3.7 times 10 to the plus 31 and divide it by the luminosity of the sun, 3.8 times 10 to the 26. Well, 3.7 over 3.8, that's nearly 1. So what I'm actually getting here is 10 to the fifth, or 1 with five zeros. And we'd write it in terms of the luminosity of the sun. So what it really means is that the luminosity of Betelgeuse is 10 to the fifth, or 100,000 times more luminous, more powerful than the sun. Just to kind of summarize, there's a few details that I think are important when we actually go about making measurements. So this brightness is an easy measurement. And that's because we're talking about light reaching us here in the Earth. So it's easy to make the measurement because the light we're talking about is right here on the Earth. To measure distances, we've got a we've got lots of methods for measuring distances. And it's kind of summarized in this chart here. So if something's closer than the sun, we can use radar. We use something called stellar parallax for relatively close stars that we can see. Uh, we have something called spectroscopic parallax for more distant stars, but it actually doesn't involve parallax at all. Um, it's really to do with the HR diagram. We use the HR diagram to work out the distance to the star. And we're going to talk a lot more about the HR diagram. There are certain stars that vary in their intensity in a periodic manner, and they can be used if they're found to estimate distances. And then we've got some other methods, the standard candles and the Tully Fisher method for very distant objects. And then the luminosity here, well, once you've got distance and brightness, you can use them to get the luminosity. And the luminosity is very important to study stars because it's an intrinsic property. It tells us a, something about the inner workings of the star in a sense. You'll see it's an integral part of, di of the HR diagram, which we're going to talk more about. So let's summarize the big ideas of the video. We started with the idea of apparent magnitude, and that was just classifying stars by levels. How bright did they seem one compared to another? And then we talked about brightness of a star. We said it was essentially measuring the same thing as apparent magnitude, but it's more mathematical, and it's really the intensity of a star at Earth. We then went on to talk about luminosity, which was the output radiated power of a star. And we saw that the brightness was related to the luminosity because brightness is an intensity. So it's really the power output divided by the surface area of the sphere with the radius equal to the star Earth distance and centered, of course, at the star. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.